Okay, in today's video, I'm going to go over the Atwood machine, Newton's second law, and constant acceleration. Because in the Atwood machine, we have constant acceleration, and that's what the Atwood machine was originally used for. It was used by Reverend George Atwood to study the laws of motion, including constant acceleration. You can see that he has set up this system where we have a pulley, and we have two masses, and if we release the pulley, the masses are going to spin, and well, excuse me, the mass is not going to spin, but the pulley is going to spin. One mass will go down, one mass will go up, and they will accelerate with a constant acceleration, and the acceleration of them will be the same. The acceleration of M2 and the acceleration of M1 will be the same. Now, we often say that the pulley is a massless and frictionless pulley, so we don't have to worry about rotational inertia, and we often say that the strings have no mass, we don't have to worry about the changing mass of the string as the string gets longer on one side and shorter on the other. But it is going to rotate, and it's going to rotate in this case because M2 is greater. The pulley is going to rotate in this direction. Okay, now this is important because we have to decide for the pulley and the rotation of the pulley which direction we're going to call the positive direction and which direction we're going to call the negative direction, or really just what we're going to call the positive direction. And it's easiest just to call the direction of rotation the positive direction. So the pulley is going to rotate counterclockwise, M2 is going to accelerate downwards, M1 is going to accelerate upwards, and we can use Newton's second law to calculate that acceleration. The acceleration of the objects is going to be the same. So Newton's second law as we know, says that the sum of the forces acting on the system is going to be equal to the mass times the acceleration. Now the goal is to calculate the acceleration. So we want to calculate the acceleration and we know that the acceleration is going to be the sum of the forces divided by the mass of the system. Okay, so we have to sum up the forces, but before we actually sum up the forces, let's just draw them. So we have them all in there, we keep track of everything. We know that M2 has some mass, and therefore it has some weight, and its weight force is going to point downwards, and we're going to call that M2g. Okay, M2, the mass, times the acceleration due to gravity will give us the weight. And for M1, we have the same thing, except it points down. What it does is point down also in this way, but we have to designate it m one g because they're different masses the acceleration due to gravity is the same but the masses are different so we're going to call it m2 and m1 so you want to make sure you do that then because they're suspended by a string or they're hanging by a string there's a tension force for m2 of course the tension force points upwards and we have m2 so why don't we just call that force of tension on two and then we have the same thing we have a tension force for number one and that points upwards also and therefore we're going to call that uh, why don't we just call that FT1. Okay, now before we go on and talk about the acceleration, we should notice we've called counterclockwise the positive direction. That means that on this side, this arrow points down this way. So that means that on the left hand side, the positive direction is downwards. Okay, now on this side, you got to be a little careful here which way we call positive. The whole thing is going to rotate in this direction, and we're going to call this direction positive. So therefore, upwards on the right-hand side is positive. Okay, so that's a little bit of a conceptual thing, a little bit of thing you have to kind of be able to visualize that. But on the left-hand side, positive is downwards, and on the right-hand side, positive is upwards based on the counterclockwise rotation of the pulley. They are consistent with the rotation of the pulley, and we're calling counterclockwise the positive direction. Okay, so we want to keep that straight. And then the last thing is, I think we should draw in the acceleration because we know that the system is going to be accelerating in the direction of the acceleration, even though they're both positive in this case. I think it's good just to emphasize that. So M2 moves downwards. It is going to be speeding up when it goes downwards. Therefore, its acceleration vector points down in this direction. So I'm going to draw an arrow for the acceleration vector and put an A next to it. And then M1 is moving upwards and speeding up, so its acceleration is going to be up in this direction, so its acceleration vector is going to be pointing upwards on this side, and that's going to be also A. Now, it's not A1 and A2 because they have the same acceleration, it's just A. All right, so I think we have everything laid out there. We have the direction of the rotation is counterclockwise, that's positive. We drew the forces, the weights, the tensions we designated. The up on the right-hand side is positive, down on the left-hand side is positive. We drew the acceleration vectors and we laid it all out and now we can add up the forces and figure out, calculate what the acceleration is going to be. So let's do that right now. So we know, as we said above, 
the acceleration is going to be equal to the sum of the forces divided by the mass. So let's sum the forces up. It's good to start with a positive force so we don't have a negative sign in front. M2g points downwards, that's the positive direction for the left hand side. So we have M2g as the first force and then we can do M1. On the right hand side, up is positive, M1 points downwards or M1g points downwards. So we know it's going to be negative M1g. Okay, now the tension forces. On the left hand side, the tension force points up for M2, but down is positive, so this is going to be minus Ft, and that is 2. And you can see the tension force points up for M1. On the right hand side, up is positive, so therefore we're going to call that positive Ft1. Okay, that's all the forces. We just added up all the forces. Now we got to add up the masses. We have M1 plus M2. Okay, so now we notice we have the two, the two weights and the two tensions. And one thing about the tensions is the tensions, because it's two objects, they're separated by a string, the tensions are going to be equal in magnitude but opposite in direction. You can see they're opposite in direction. This one's negative, this one's positive but they're going to be have the same magnitude. So we're going to be able to cancel these. Like if this is minus five newtons, this would be plus five newtons and minus five plus five is zero. So if you have two objects separated by a string, whether they're separated by a pulley also, or they're just on a table and you're pulling them on a horizontal surface, those tension forces are going to be equal in magnitude, but opposite in direction and you can cancel them out, okay? Now we're going to now rewrite this equation and we can rewrite it like this that the acceleration is now equal to m2g minus m1g. We got rid of the tensions and we now have m1 plus m2. Okay, and that's really it. That's the equation for the acceleration of an Atwood machine. It's just the two masses and the acceleration due to gravity. That's all there is to it. Now, you often see this equation written like this. It's the same thing, just a little different form. What people often do is they factor out the acceleration due to gravity just to make it look a little simpler, a little cleaner. You have M2 minus M1, and you have M1 plus m2 and you put that in parentheses and then you just multiply that times g okay this equation and this equation are the same equation all i did was i factored g out of the top and you have m2 minus m1 and m1 plus m2 and you multiply that times g and you get the acceleration okay let's try an actual situation here let's just say for the heck of it that uh, m2 is 30 kilograms and let's say that M1 is 10 kilograms. That's all we really need. And then we can figure out what the acceleration would be. So we're going to put down that the acceleration, therefore, is going to be M2 minus M1. So it's 30 minus 10 kilograms. And therefore, we're going to, on the bottom, we're going to add those two up. 30 plus 10 kilograms and we're going to multiply both multiply that by 9.8 meters per second squared okay so this is 30 minus 10 is 20 30 plus 10 is 40 20 divided by 40 is 0 0.5 0 0.5 times 9.8 tells us that the root that the acceleration of this system is simply going to be 4.9 meters per second squared okay over here our kilograms are going to cancel because of kilograms at the top kilograms at the bottom so we're just left with 9.8 excuse me 4.9 for our units meters per second squared okay so that is the acceleration of the atwood machine um, it's a little complicated when you kind of set it up but if you're consistent when you set it up get your directions and your positives and your negatives all set up then it pretty much comes together uh what well, comes together uh, pretty quickly, I think. Okay, so thanks for watching. Hope that was helpful, and we will see you next time.